Okay, so we're in the basement. And the Wemo is supposed to just be going off here. In just a second. So this is the Wemo. We have our hot water recirculation pump, and then our water heater is plugged up and above, and this is this is just an alarm, so if the power goes out, it'll beep. Which is nice to know. New humidifier. And then this is the pump that it's turning on and off. It's supposed to be rated for 1500 watts resistive. And I have no idea how many watts this is, but they didn't really tell us. We have it in the speed 3, which is the highest speed, 93. Compared to 67, compared to 46. This one's supposed to be 120 volts at 60 hertz. I guess that says PW, so I'm not sure if that's some plumber lingo for something. But we're at, there we go, just turned on. Now this should go for, I have a program for two minutes, that's the rule. It's just turned to seven o'clock PM. So the pump is running, I can feel it. I don't think you guys are gonna be able to hear it. And unless there's bubbles in the line, you won't see it. So we have PEX. And then this was a three-quarter pipe fitting to half an inch PEX. And we did shutoffs here and here. And then this is the recirculate lines. They go up through the house. Okay, so you can see we're still on. So that little white light indicates on. I can interrupt that at any time by just pressing the button and it'll break the rule. So now this just kicked on because the cooled water is now coming down here and I have a pressure sensor so I'm just gonna open this valve this would be the where we do our clean out so we turn that on and you can see it's at like 80 something okay this is getting toasty it's getting hot already so now we're about a minute seven in or a minute five I believe so this should go off here in another few seconds. I'm gonna let it run. This is obviously very hot. This is where the hot water is going out to the house. And then it's returning from the house here. Being pulled through this pump, there's an arrow over here. Can't see it from that angle. And then it's just going through here. And it's coming into the drain on the bottom of the water heater. And so here in a second, that should shut off. And since you can't hear it, going to shut off in about 13 seconds, I'm guessing. Let's call it 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and my time count is off a little bit. Yep, there you go. So it just shut off. So now this pump, I can feel it still, and the pressure's dropped just a hair. So now I can just shut this off so I don't have to worry about leaks. So this was tricky here because this is a hose fitting, um, like a garden hose, three quarter to three quarter pipe to three quarter pipe to three quarter pipe down to half inch packs. And we've got another piece of packs here that we're gonna add on that's gonna clean this up. And then basically we're gonna have a 90 and then it's gonna come straight over and then 90 straight up, just to make it a little neater and to keep stuff out of this corner here. So that's the hot water recirculation system. Now this motor was probably only to the tune of about 60 bucks. Um, we can link to that. These valves were, I believe about eight bucks each. So we have maybe $15 worth of fittings here. These are a couple bucks each. So we're up to maybe 20 bucks. Another couple bucks here worth of loose ends. The PEX was all in place. So I bought this, this was like five or six bucks. This was like seven or eight bucks. This was like five bucks. So there's 12, 17, 20, 37. This is probably three bucks, so $40, 41 or two. And these little clips, let's just call them, let's just call it $50 worth of fittings. And then about $60 worth of motor. And then this Wemo was about $30.
So if you figure on for $130, I have a programmable remote control, wirelessly remote control from cellular or Wi-Fi um, control of this, but I have it set to run for two minutes, which is enough to recirculate fully the water in the entire circuit. So now this is hot. I mean, this is PEX and it's warm through the PEX. It's equivalently warm. I would say this is just a little bit warmer than over here. And I can always increase my time if I want to run that for, let's call it, if we want that to run for five minutes, I can do that too. But I'm doing that twice an hour. So basically however long it takes for this, this entire recirculate line to get cold or to cool back down, and then it's gonna pump it back through the line. And so you always have hot water at every line in the entire house, notwithstanding wherever they tap off and go to a faucet. So like maybe three feet of, of water. So that's how we did our hot water recirculation. If you go and buy, Watts has an offering that you can overhaul an existing system. And what you do is you go onto your hot water side, you take off this three quarter pipe um, and they give you the motor, it goes in here, it's got a little uh, timer, which will allow you to turn it on and off mechanically. And then at the end of your furthest line, there's a valve that's thermostatically controlled. And it basically, when the hot water pumps out, it returns it to the cold line and that comes back in to your water heater on the cold line side. And that's also a check valve. So it only allows it to go this way. The problem is that on your cold water side, you're always getting warm water. In this application, I get cold water right away and I get hot water right away. But it's challenging because you have to plan ahead when you're building your house to do that. And it's certainly not free, but it wasn't that much. I think the, the plumbers might've charged us like three or 400 bucks to do that. So to add this, I think they were wanting 600 bucks more. And so, you know, for somebody that's not good with plumbing or maybe they don't have like PEX tools, because these tools were not very expensive. For the price of the, um, the upgrade to the Watts system, you could buy all of this stuff. This, I mean, you're probably into it for 60 to $70 for this stuff, which you need a cutter, you need the PEX uh, crimper, and this is a multi-size tool, and they've, they've got a variety of different PEX uh, styles. I believe I'm using PEX, I think this is PEX C. Um, but you can do compression rings on there. And then there's Pro PEX, which has a much bigger fitting on a half inch and a three quarter inch, all that stuff is bigger. And you can see my plumbers actually use this other style. So this is, this is just a, it doesn't really matter. It's all gonna compress the same way. Um, this clear stuff is supposed to be slightly better from what they tell me at the store, so who knows if it's true, uh, than the opaque red, blue, and white lines. So I got this clear piece, and this piece cost me $1.79 or somewhere in that park, and then these things are, I don't know, they're maybe like two bucks each. So you're talking about all in for us, we're probably right around 200 bucks if you add all that stuff up. And a lot of headaches too, because it was it was a lot of work. But I have the ability to shut off my water lines, isolate the motor. I have the ability to see the pressure. Um, I can still drain. All I have to do is just take this off and then a little bit of water. I have a piece of paper down here just to see if I have drips. I've been testing it for three days now. But I can pull this three quarter inch hose fitting off. And then I can hook up a hose and then drain to my drain if I need to. Got a dehumidifier going because it's still new construction, trying to pull out the, the moisture from the concrete still. And then just don't forget to open up your, your drain valve. So, and I wanted this on here also, you know, like in case the kids are over here playing and they kick a ball or whatever and it accidentally turns the valve on, I don't want them to get burned. Um, that is incidentally just a garden hose tester. It's only designed for cold water, so you wouldn't want to run that pressure gauge all the time. Um, and it's still going to, the heat is still going to deteriorate the fitting inside of here over a long period of time, I'm assuming. The other advantage is we can turn down the temperature. 
So we were at A before, which is like, this is very hot, like, burn your skin off. This is like, just, you better not mix it to the hot side or you'll burn just from touching the knob. This is extremely hot, like industrial dishwasher. This is like, you had to wait so long to get hot water is the only reason you'd ever put it that hot and then this is hot. And then this is like not even on. So, with a 50 gallon operation like this, um, it works out good for us. Now, the true test of time will be if this, this little Wemo device, which incidentally can be unplugged and moved to any outlet. Um, and that's pretty cool, I thought. So, I don't know guys. I'll uh, put some comments in there if something goes haywire on this system. But for now, I'm really happy with the way it's working. Uh, you can definitely tell when the pump is running. Um, in fact, I'll go ahead and shut off my humidifier, dehumidifier rather, and I'll shut off the furnace here. Okay, so it's off. Okay, so now all you can hear is the drips. And then we have a, another dehumidifier in in the other room so it's quiet now i'm going to turn on the pump so you guys can hear it this is just to show you how this works too you can just press the button to turn it on okay see how quiet that is guys and that's on the highest speed middle lowest I mean, it's just like nothing. You, 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 you cannot hear. You cannot hear that thing running. And also, there's the middle. There's the high speed. The other thing you can do is you can set rules for this. And one rule could be to only stay on. So I'll just turn that back off. Uh, another rule you can set is the on after so many minutes. So if you wanted this thing to be remotely controlled by operators that have their own cell phones or their tablets, you could turn it on to call for hot water so you don't have to run the hot water. And then you would just be like a demand system. So the other thing I thought about doing was basically having a temperature sensor that would be all the way down, probably away from this just a little bit so you don't get the residual heat from the water tank. But I'd maybe put it somewhere in here. Um, and then you really would be controlling this system and you would say when the temperature drops, you know, to like 150 degrees, I want this to kick back on until it reaches a target that is commensurate to what we're doing, um, in this. And then you have to balance that all against the fact that your entire circuit of water that comes out here and goes through your entire house is now cooling down until it comes back and then this is going to push it back through the system so my understanding is that the pex is going to be a, a certain level of insulative value if that's even a word that's a lot greater than the copper because the copper is going to radiate the heat quicker um and then the pex will help to insulate the transmission of the the heat that you've paid for here and let's just imagine this being a 60 or 70 foot line. Half inch now instead of three quarter inch. So you mitigate your surface area a little bit. But you're going to displace the heat that's in this water into the air. So just a lot of things to consider when you're playing with these systems. I think my duty cycle of two minutes on this motor might be just a little bit short. I may have to kick that up. The user interface on that uh, Wemo is not great. Let's put it that way. It's very tedious to set up when you're trying to do something like what I was doing. And there are better ways to do it. But this is just what I came up with that's going to give me all the features I need. And that what, what we want. And I'm happy with it so far. So I'll report in the comments below if... Uh, everything blows up in our face in like six weeks or if this Wemo dies tomorrow uh, we did kill two other programmable timers that were supposed to be 
800 watts of tungsten rating. Um, I think that was 1250 watts resistive. So like for a lighting circuit and we killed those both two days in a row. We thought we got a lemon and then we finished off the second one and it took one, uh, I would say like one half of the day. So we'll see if Wemo lasts. Guys, thanks for watching. This is an off topic video, but just part of, uh, part of sharing our build experience is just uh, showing how these systems have turned out. My wife is re resistant to doing an update video. The shop is coming along. And when I say the shop is coming along, this is not a shop. It is a table with a soldering iron set up. Got my flux flipped over. That's always good. Um, we are digging through boxes, working on getting things unpacked and getting light bulbs switched. Of course, when you buy a brand new house, you would think that you would get light bulbs. Well, they come with light bulbs, but they're incandescent. And what the electrician charges is usually about triple what you can buy them for yourself. So you just get what you need and you put it in yourself. And we're working on storage still. This is kind of the last place to get attention. This is our basement, obviously. But we're starting to kind of make it somewhat livable um even though it's not done it's getting there and it feels really good our garage is almost empty <laughs> so i promise you guys videos about the um about the shop build and they are coming but just look at all this junk guys this is this is what i have this is what i'm up against so lots of stuff to store and organize but right now we have the shop operational to where we can cut wood you know build the the things that we need to build as we work into this house but we aren't quite to the point where we've got um all of the radio controlled stuff set up so i'm just kind of doing it upstairs so to speak which i know a lot of you guys aren't fortunate enough to have a shop so you can uh enjoy this experience plus the other thing i'm trying to figure out is like this is a concrete wall and i don't want to have to use concrete anchors for everything and then this is a drywall wall but i need to put outlets all over the place so i'm thinking about taking down this drywall put it on the other side here so that i have good separation for dust control and noise control and then i will have an opened well an open wall to work with um getting outlets and things like this drawn through and then I can just deal with this when we get ready to finish the basement later on sometime in the future. And we're thinking about doing the same thing over here. And that will separate the utility side from the living side. Uh, more than I expected to share today, but I, I couldn't resist sharing this, this Wemo and this uh, water pump system. I felt like that worked pretty good. And it was very difficult to get... Uh, good advice on it. It wasn't hard to install once we got the right fittings. Um, I would say we spent probably two and a half hours total on the actual installation. And that was with not knowing what you're doing time. Uh, if you knew what you were doing, you could knock this thing out in an hour easily. And um, lots of being super careful. And this thing we fought with. And uh, if we wouldn't have had to fight with it, it would have been no big deal. So... All right, guys, uh, leave your comments in the description below. We'll link to the stuff that we can link to as usual, and we appreciate you watching. Again, this stuff, when we figure out how we're going to store it and how I'm going to do all the projects over here, we will have that. It won't link in this video, but it will be on the playlist for this video for the new house build. So come back for more. Thanks for watching, guys.